Hello, welcome back again to my channel. My name is Casey Santos. I'm the chair of the Department of Computer Science, as well as the founder and director of the Applied Artificial Intelligence Research Lab at the University of South Dakota. USD is the flagship state university. In this lecture, I'll be looking at carbon footprint, a new angle of looking at sustainable AI. In other words, we call him green computing. Does carbon footprint count or matter? This primarily is the talk about in the series. Before I begin, as usual, here is my statement. My views, opinions, and research standpoints do not represent the university as well as the research lab I'm affiliated with. Let us understand carbon footprint. In layman understanding, we always think of the following engines, and they mostly come from transportation. And we and we deal with them good all times in terms of taxation and so on. Today's concern in my lecture is not about this. It is about research in computing. Back in days, we call research in computing as we started to build machine learning models. The primary reason behind this is the need of large data set for any problems to be analyzed or crunched. In today's term, we become a little bit more sexier and we call it artificial intelligence, AI. Regardless where you come from, anywhere ranging from energy, healthcare, and all the way up to education, AI models are based on data-driven decision-making procedure. What does it mean is we always need large data that potentially represent all possible cases. AI has been always the deal breaker, starting from autom autom automation industry, healthcare industry, digital humanities, fashion industry, and service to the people. Brilliant. Let's talk about machine learning and big data. In today's data-driven world, making informed decision is paramount and the scale of data we deal with has grown to unprecedented levels this is where supercomputing steps in as a game, game changer supercomputers with the with their immense processing power are transforming the way we harness and analyze big data to drive decision making imagine a situation in healthcare of patients, medical records, comprising complex data points, need to be analyzed quickly to make critical treatment decisions. Supercomputers can process these huge data sites within seconds, enabling doctors to make accurate and, li li and life-saving decisions. But it's not just in healthcare, right? Supercomputing is revolutionizing fields like climate science. Climate models generate petabytes of data, and supercomputers are essential for simulating complex climate patterns, aiding in our understanding of climate change and facilitating critical policy decisions. Business and finance are an exception to this. Handling risk is one of the concern, concerns in finance industry, and it requires supercomputing. In one word, the fusion of supercomputing and artificial intelligence is unlocking all possible new opportunities. We're not just limited to healthcare, climate science, business, and, and finance. We're also looking at national security. Governments utilize 
supercomputing power to, to analyze vast data sets for intelligence and defense purposes. We're talking about the safety of the nations. In summary, supercomputing for big data is something important to, important to take. As we continue to unlock the potential of supercomputing power, it is not just about processing data, it is also about shaping a smarter and better or informed world. Good news, right? Now it's a time to think about carbon footprint. In our big data era, where information flows ceaselessly, Supercomputing stands as the technological powerhouse, but with great power comes with great responsibility. And our concern is the env environmental impact. Why is that? Right? Well, supercomputers are indispensable for crunching a big amount of data for all possible problems, but at the same time, they consume a lot or substantial energy. This energy usage contributes to a significant carbon footprint. And in the slides, you get to see carbon footprint versus data traffic. One of the results shown in this slide is an estimated of 100 megatons of carbon emissions Per year is very similar to American aviation. Alarming, right? And relax. It is for all of us to take a close look at those big companies. I repeat, we're not here for going against them. Tesla, Meta Data Center, Amazon, and ChatGPT. These are just few examples. Just for your reference, ChatGPT drinks 500 milliliters of water for every 15 to 20 conversations on an average. How about that? Let's talk about sustainable AI. Before that, I'm going to repeat big data and supercomputers contribute to a substantial carbon footprint. As we harness big data and supercomputing for insights and innovation, it is essential to also focus on sustainable practices like energy efficient technologies and renewable energy sources. So we could avoid possible future environmental related risk for the generations to come. One of the solutions that a machine learning scientist could think is finding the right tool. Let us understand this with an example. What's close? You have two different problems, a drinking coffee with your girlfriend and cleaning driveway, I'm talking about snow, before you hit the road to your office. And you have two different tools, shovel and spoon. A wise gentleman definitely picks spoon up to drink coffee with his girlfriend and shovel for cleaning driveway, right? Now imagine a situation, what if you get to pick a shovel for a coffee and a spoon for cleaning driveway? What would, what would be the consequence? Cleaning driveway with a spoon will take months to complete the task and different hor horrible situation happens from taking a sobel for a coffee your girlfriend is gonna leave you right away what does it mean is one should find the right tool for those applied machine learning scientists we are not required to use deep learning models for linear simple or easy tasks did I say separable data? Yes. In other words, there is no point to use deep structured machine learning models with millions of parameters 
to get simple task done. Just but just to make your work fancy. The second solution we can think of is the optimization, which is very close to human AI. Optimization is the need, just like human neurons, which we call in human AI. Humans begin learning from the moment of their birth. Their neurons get trained every second, every minute, hour, day, week, and so on. I would like to remind you that the human brain contains approximately 86 billion neurons. Suppose we often ask you to go for a coffee. How many seconds you will take to respond back? Less than 30 seconds for sure, right? The reason is you do not need to process all 86 billion neurons. How about a complicated ask? If you get a little complicated science or math ask, you definitely take a little more time, maybe a day. In this case, you would use hundreds of neurons for sure. Understanding use of the right set of neurons is what the human AI is about. Humans definitely don't process all neurons to crunch their input data. If that's the case, can we not build a neural network that is the replica of this? Meaning, let us use only those neurons which are we need, not all of them. The projects sound ambitious, but doable. Let us build the future of green computing, or sustainable AI, and no to carbon footprint. Like before, I definitely love to thank you, and I'll see you with more topic-based lectures in the future.